Hello, and welcome back to the Big Bad Bench. Today, uh, we're going to be working on my gaming system. Um, and so what we have here is a, is a Ryzen uh, 3900X um, and a Gigabyte AB350M D3H motherboard. Um, this same processor is the one I used in my uh, streaming PC. Um, I actually pulled it back out today uh, to do a BIOS update, um, and then I realized I didn't need to do that because I had already done the BIOS update on this. Um, so uh, let's talk about how this thing runs now. Um, and so if we look at this computer, you can see something's a little weird. I'm going to move the camera a little bit here. And we have this system running inside of a Mac G4 case. Uh, so this is a Mac G4 uh, sawtooth case. Um, and these cases were not known for their airflow. And so um, I had done some mods like adding a, an extra cooling fan in the bottom with a giant hole to bring air in. Um, but a 3900 is a 12 core CPU. Um, and really this motherboard isn't great for it. And so between the motherboard not being great for it and um, this all being crammed into a tiny little computer, um, it, it gets a little hot and really it, it throttles a little bit. And so what I did is I just ran 3D Mark to sort of get a sense for the performance of this thing, um, but also to, to show uh, the temperature. And so if we look at the CPU temperature during this last 3D Mark run, you can see we hit 83.4 degrees, it looks like there. Um, so what I want to do is compare that to the new processor going in. So I'm going to write that down real quick, 83.4. And our fire strike score is 26,384. Okay, so um, this motherboard, let me shut this thing down. This motherboard was not designed for high-end processors. Um, and so really this 12-core 3900X is a bit excessive. Um, but I'm going to show you why I need to use this motherboard. Um, so I do a lot of retro stuff if you haven't seen my channel before. Um, and so this motherboard is one of the newest available, most recent available. I'm not going to say it's new, um, but it's one of the most recent available motherboards that has... this, a regular PCI slot. Um, and so I like to throw things in my computer, like old SCSI cards, um, and, and use them for different things. Um, and so I like this motherboard because of that uh, PCI slot. It's really hard to find any relatively modern motherboards that have regular old PCI slots. So we're sort of stuck to this motherboard. Um, and so during the pandemic, I had found what at the time was a reasonably priced 3900. Um, you know, during the, the processor shortages and all that kind of thing. Um, so I think I, I paid $330 for that. I think I said that in the, the last stream where I, or the stream where I built my streaming PC. Um, which, you know, at the time was a really good price. Um, and so it was basically what I could find. Basically, you know, the new Ryzen 5000 processors were a bit, were sort of running around that price. Uh, the 5600 was running around that price. So I figured I may as well get the 3900. And so after testing and everything, I realized it was just not a great fit for this enclosed system. Um, so... I, you know, I took the processor out to build my new streaming system. Um, but in the meantime, AMD decided that the 300 series chipsets, so the 
AB 350M. Uh, 350 represents the, the chipset that this thing has. Um, and originally, you know, the 300 series chipsets for Ryzen CPUs came out with the, the ones that 1000 series. Um, and so, you know, when the Ryzen 1000s were out, that's fine, you know, that they worked with this. Um, but when the Ryzen 5000s came out, AMD was like, no, you need to, you know, B450 at least to run a Ryzen 5000. Well, back in January, I guess they sort of changed their stance on that. Um, and they started allowing um, the 5000 series with a BIOS update to work on um, on 300 series chipsets. And so in March, I guess, March or April, um, Gigabyte came out with a BIOS update for this board um, that will allow Ryzen 5000 series. Um, and just last week, um, Newegg had a sale on the Ryzen 5600X, which should be plenty of CPU for my gaming needs. Um, so, you know, during the height of the pandemic, I, I think I remember seeing the 5600X going for, I don't know, uh, around 300 bucks, um, which, you know, it's not terrible, but it's not ideal. Um, and so last week, this dropped to um, about $175. Um, so that was a much more palatable price for this CPU. Um, so when I got this motherboard, it had a bunch of thermal paste all around it, and I never spent the time to clean that up. So let's clean that up real quick. using a little bit of isopropanol on a cotton swab. So between the case being small, um, well, and having poor airflow, the other problem with this case is that there's not a whole lot of room for a heat sink. And so I have to use the Noctua um, I think it's a NH9, um, which is a very uh, low profile heat sink. Um, and for the, its size, it does a nice job. But um, you know, for cooling a 12 core processor, it's a little bit, it's pushing it. Um, and so um, I think the 5600X is going to be a much better fit for this heat sink. We'll clean that off. And part of the reason I have to do all this is that even though this is a nice functioning heatsink, it's really a pain in the butt to take on and off. So you, in this particular case, it, it, you have to totally take out the motherboard in order to, to swap CPUs. Um, if you have a more modern case with um, with a hole behind this, uh, you know, an access panel behind your motherboard, um, you could do it, but uh, nope, not on this. Okay, so let's get our new CPU. Curious which version of the cooler they give you. Oh, it's just the regular aluminum one, relatively thin. Alright, so I guess, yeah, this really doesn't need a whole lot of cooling. So I was going to show the uh, 
the process for upgrading the BIOS, but basically you just go in, um, you download your BIOS from the motherboard manufacturer, um, in this case it's Gigabyte, um, and then uh, go into the, uh, put it onto a USB drive, then go into the BIOS and run the um, BIOS update utility. Okay, so I'm not, I'm using this to sort of spread it a little bit. I'm not continually putting more and more that whole time. Okay. All right, so this mounting system. this kind of put one of these little screws through there screw that on there just gonna leave that loose for a second put the opposite corner in Okay, now they're both, that's lined up top to bottom. We can put the other two in. Okay, take this extra thermal paste off my thumb before I get it everywhere. And then I'm just bottoming these out. I'm not really cranking it down. You don't need to, to really crank it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm using the knurled part of the screwdriver to tighten it. Um, okay. The retention mechanism underneath the heat sink is really what provides the spring. Um, so you don't really have to crank it down super tight to hold it on there. Um, that in there for now. Okay, set this aside. So this case that I call, well, my, my gaming computer is called the Rotten Apple. Um, this case was something I bought on, on hard forums years ago. Uh, I think it was 2008. Um, and so this case, somebody had, had modified it before. I had it, um, and you might notice this giant scorch mark right here. Um, when I got it, the the motherboard something had exploded on the motherboard, and back at that time, I really didn't know anything about component repair or anything like that. So I I, I can't tell you what went wrong, um, and that motherboard's long gone. Um, but it was. It was, a, it was a good motherboard, <laughs> or it was a good system. I really liked the, the paint job. It was weird. Um, the other thing that came in that system was this, which is a G4 uh, upgrade processor, 12, uh, 1.2 gigahertz uh, processor upgrade. Um, and it turns out that even though there's some scorch marks around there um, the processor was still good and so I used this processor for a really long time um, until the motherboard died again um, so let's see we gotta get this thing out of here so one of the issues with this case is that one of the retention clips is busted and so I want to replace that So these things use this big plastic panel um, as sort of a spring uh, for those retention clips. So when I got the case, like I said, it had a regular G4 um, and I used the, the system as, as a regular G4 system for a long time. Um, 
until it died. Um, so then I modified it by basically just drilling holes um, in the correct locations for standoffs, um, for this system, for things to line up properly, you need do need longer standoffs than what you would normally see in a computer case. Um, so these are slightly longer standoffs. Um, but aside from that, basically just some drilling um, and it worked fine. Also, I want to do some cleaning. I'm going to set this aside. I don't want to take this scorch mark off because that, that was part of this computer's history. But there is some tape residue from that. There's like a retention bracket that holds the hard drive cable and other cables. Uh, oh yeah, for, aside from um, just drilling the locations for the um, for the standoffs, did have to cut off a couple of the standoffs that did exist already. Um, I just used a, a Dremel with a cutoff wheel and cut them off a little bit shorter, made them clear the um, motherboard. a little dirty. find it. I just had my Windex. Oh, what's going on? All right. It's a little better. So looking back at some of my work, there's some some cut marks that probably could have been a little bit cleaner, but it's the system was was done a while ago. <laughs> I think my technique has improved a little bit since then. Okay, so that's nice and clean. Um, I'm going to need to do here though. I forgot that I had to cut extra holes in this plastic thing. So I'm gonna make a little mark here. Make a little mark here. sort of getting a sense for how far it goes so that I'm sure I make this hole big enough. OK. 
Okay, are there any other things I need to clear? Probably good to do one right there. And let's do a little one right there. All right, so I'm gonna get my Dremel, I'll be right back. See how this goes. All right, I'm gonna mute for a second so the Dremel doesn't um, blow your ears out. One second. One second. Okay, I think that's better now. Um, I had the wrong collar, call it, for my Dremel installed. And this just loosens up really easily when I'm using this. Hey, Garth Beagle is here. How's it going, Garth? Looking forward to hearing how much hate I get from the Mac community about using a G4 case that's been abused. But the abuse started well before I owned the case, so I'm not, I'm not taking total credit for that abuse. All right, I'm going to mute again for a second.
Okay, I think my audio is back now. Yeah, that was that was loud. That wouldn't have have gone well over the audio. Very chirpy. Um, I made quite the mess. Look at all this nice plastic all over the place. I think I had a disconnect there for a second. Sorry about that. I'm covered in little plastic shreds. I'm just going to use the razor blade to get rid of some of these <clears throat> residual bits. So like I said earlier, <laughs> this system, the system had some, some special love given to it, uh, before I got it. And you'll, once I close it up and show you the outside, you're going to see some of that special love. Um, and I've, I mean, since I've owned the case, I've, I've appreciated their work. I get a chuckle out of it every time I look at this case. Um, I've thought about getting new side panels. Um, cause I have, you know, a, a couple of G4 sawtooth systems that are in really good shape, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. There's something about the way that they, they did their work here that I just really enjoy <laughs> and hopefully you'll stick around and people will see what I did, what they did. Okay, let's get some of this stuff out of there. Oof, that made a mess. There's probably neater ways to do that. I probably shouldn't have done it right by the computer area. Oh, well. um, okay, I think I need to remove two of these. Really, it's just a G4 sawtooth. I mean, they made lots of these. But there's always someone, you know? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so this should, all these things go under there. These go under here. That goes under there. Um, What are we stuck on here? Oh, there. Okay, so one of the little modifications I had to do was instead of regular screws that hold these in um, to clear the motherboard, I used uh, flathead screws, recessed head. something real quick okay All right, I don't know what's going on with my internet today things are a little wonky Okay, so I just want to check to make sure this clip thing all works. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna set this down. Okay, now we've got to put our standoffs back on. Oh, are you kidding me? All right, so I missed that. <laughs> Take this back off. If you're you're joining late, 
this scorch mark was one of the the reasons I got this case back in the in the olden days. Um, the motherboard had basically exploded on the previous owner. Looks like I'm having connection issues again. I apologize. I'm not doing this one as pretty. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, shoot. It's going to bug me. All right. I'm going to mute again for a second. Okay, that should have given us the clearance we need. Also made some more mess. All right, I think we're in now. I think everything's clear. This one needs to go away. It's gonna lose all of its springiness. It should have plenty. Oh yeah, so much spring. Okay, standoffs. I think, yeah, these are all the same length. Just wanted to double check. all the things we need there. Okay, we have our CPU installed. Um, oh, the IO shield. Okay, so when I did my hacking of the case to turn this into a PC case, um, I realized that the distance between the back and the, the IO ports is not perfect. Um, there's like a little step here in the case and so the, the cutout isn't exactly perfectly, like it, the, the IO shield won't snap in like if it were a regular um, PC computer case. It gets the job done. So 
fits in there. I did rewire the front so that the, the power LED and the power switch work. Um, I did not wire up the reset switch or anything like that. not going to move anywhere. Okay, so I have all the screws in, so I'm going to snug them all up. Again, I'm not going to crank the motherboard down super hard. You don't want to do that. You just want to snug it down. Okay, and this goes right there. This goes right there. This goes over here, power connector for the CPU. Um, okay. I'm going to start with just a video card. power switch on three two one okay we got power let's see if we're posting I really hope this works I'd really like to have one one computer out of my workshop <laughs> at least by today um, part of the reason I'm trying to get this done is to get it out of my workshop. Okay, so um, one of the things that ha that's happening is it's uh, restarting a few times. So you can tell because the, the fan spins down and then it spins back up. Um, With Ryzen systems, it's pretty common to have RAM training issues when you swap your CPU. Um, I might need to reset the CMOS. Sometimes it figures itself out. Sometimes it doesn't. Like I've mentioned, this is not a very high-end motherboard, so it doesn't have a lot of great features for diagnostics. I'm just going to give it a few more seconds. There have been times where I just kind of let it go, and it, it figures itself out after a little bit.
Oh, duh. It would help. <laughs> so, some of the eagle eyes of you might have noticed what I forgot to do. Plug in the power for the video card. Come on, Compi, post for me here. Oh, there we go. So, detected a new CPU, this new FTPM crap. Okay, there was the BIOS image. Hopefully we'll go right into Windows without issues. Okay, good. Boot in Windows. All right, we'll boot it up. Um, need to move myself for a second. Let's double check to make sure. Windows sees the processor upgrade. Okay, there's the 5600X. Actually, I don't know if this should be called an upgrade since we went from a 12 core down to a six core, um, but um, hopefully things work out for the better um, overall for the system. All right, I'm gonna restart it real quick. Um, just because sometimes Windows will detect some new stuff during, during the boot process. Okay, so. Let's, oops, wrong mouse. <laughs> Gonna go start up GPU Z. Use that to look at our sensors. So our CPU temperature is at 50 degrees. So in the BIOS, I have this thing, um, the fan setting set so that it's at max speed. Hopefully, I uh, might have reset that. Let's check the BIOS real quick before we start this. I, I want to, um, oops, I also want to install my network card. All right, let's throw in some cards. Here's one of the big reasons that I have this motherboard. <laughs> it's just to use that old SCSI card. Um, all right, so let's plug in our other things too. not telling you what exactly those things are right now. If 
wait and see if they all show up in Windows. Okay, cards installed. Um, gonna spam delete. You can see the BIOS for the SCSI card get enabled. Well, it's not going to load because there's no SCSI devices attached. But it sees it. Yes, thank you. It's really hard to use mice on this video capture device. Oh, let's see, I thought it might do that. Okay, so I'm gonna change this to full speed. And then come leave here and then save. So we can do a direct comparison between the last CPU, the 3900, and this CPU, the 5600X. The other one's a 3900X. Yeah, I can definitely hear the CPU fan is louder now. Come on, computer. There we go. I don't know if that sound is coming through on the microphone, the little eh, that might give away what one of my internal devices is. You might even have been able to see it earlier. All right, so let's check our temperature in GPU-Z. If I can find my mouse. Hello, mouse. Oh geez, oh, I'm breaking it. Okay. Oops. Getting a USB device not recognized. Plug it in there. Okay, there we go. So let's see what this thing does when we give it a little bit of a load. So while that's running, let's switch up our camera. So inside this system that's sort of been hacked up. Sorry for it should have mentioned that I was moving the camera. Um, so what we have in the bottom here is a ZIP 250 drive. Um, it's a regular old IDE ZIP 250 with an IDE to um, SATA adapter. Um, and then there is a uh, 5.25 inch to uh, slim with um, a 3.5 inch drive slot underneath there. So we have a slim uh, DVD burner up at the top and then underneath there in the 5. Point, uh, in the 3.5 inch bay, um, I have an adapter and a, a 2.5 inch uh, storage 
SATA, um, SSD. Um, and so it's a lot of stuff that's crammed in here. Um, you can still use this zip drive just like normal. Um, you can still use a CD burner just like normal. And there's plenty of storage space. So there's a lot of things crammed into this. Oh, yeah, I should also mention that um, the power supply is a Corsair CX750M uh, modular just so that it had to, don't have as many cables around inside of there. Um, but it it's plenty of power for this little system. It did great with the 3900X. Um, and so the, the processing or the power supply is not a weak spot in this system. Um, the G4s, um, their power supplies had the same regular uh, screw locations as a regular ATX power supply. Um, so it's just a little a swap place for place. Oh yeah, one other mod that I had done to the case. I'm going to move the camera again. Uh, one other mod I had done to this case back when it was still a G4 was that giant hole. <laughs> I tried to get a little bit more airflow um, and also to try to quiet it because that that side fan in the G4 is just makes so much noise. Um, so I cut the, the there's a bunch there was originally I think a series of perforated holes. Um, and I cut all that out, just made a giant hole so that there was less stuff right in front of the fan to try to quiet it. And it didn't really do a whole heck of a lot. Um, but I tried. Um, this fan in the bottom that you can see right there is very loud. Um, so I'm, I don't have that. And since I don't have the fan profiles all tuned, I just have that unplugged. I didn't want the... Um, the sound getting totally blown out for the stream. Okay, so I'll just let this go. I'll check our our numbers. video card fans getting louder um, <laughs> one of the not great things about this um, if we go back to here see the SCSI card one of the fans for the video card is right there so the, the SCSI card chokes off one of those video card fans so that's a reason our benchmarks might be a little lower because I didn't have that the SCSI card in last time so it wasn't restricting airflow, potentially increasing the temperature of the video card. So, let's see what our numbers look like. So obviously this is just 3D mark. This isn't a full-on benchmark. You know, I'm not using this for for saying my computer's awesome or anything like that. I'm just comparing the before, um, the 3900X to this new 5600X. Um, and also, you know, I'm really interested in the temperature difference between the two. And again, I had the CPU fan set at max speed before, and I have it set at max speed right now. Um, so our temperature should be sort of comparable. Um, I will say that the temperature, the 83.4 degrees I got, um, earlier, um, was a lot better than I normally used to see with that, with this system all closed up, um, because the airflow is so bad in this thing, it, the system heats up a lot. Um, and so typically the CPU would sort of 
thermal throttle and, and slow itself down a little bit. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to change up the CPU, have it run a little cooler. Um, all right, cool. So <laughs> our fire strike score actually went up. So before our fire strike score was 26,384. Um, now we're at 28,031. So, you know, the, for gaming, or at least this particular gaming um, benchmark, um, it's a little bit faster. Um, and so if we look at our temperatures, where are we at here for our CPU temperature? I'm having trouble reading that on my, uh, let's see. Okay, so our highest temperature there was 70. Yeah, we hit 70 degrees. So before, our highest temperature was 83.4. Uh, now we're at 70, so that that's almost, you know, that's close to 14 degrees, 13.4 degrees cooler. All right, so that'll be better overall for this system. I know I, I'm sort of downgrading from a 12-core down to a 6-core, um, but given the restraints of this system, I think, Overall, this is an upgrade. Um, the, you know, between the fact that a f uh, Ryzen 5000 is a good deal faster than the previous generations, um, and that the CPU shouldn't thermal throttle as much. Um, so, we'll, oh shoot, I forgot to show you all the stuff on the inside. Oh well, I kind of told you about it. But let's see if Windows is actually detecting it. I forgot to check that. Come on. Okay, we got the power back on. Okay, and you can see how that that boot was a lot faster now that sort of the the CPU and the memory's been trained. Um, oh, gotta move my face out of the way. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay, go over here. Okay, so yeah, there you go. Um, the four terabyte storage drive, zip drive. Can hear it. Can I eject it? There it goes. It ejected. Should we detect it? There we go. All right, cool. So, and our DVD burner. All right, so that's all good to go. All right, so I'm going to unplug this. All right, so this is the moment I'm sure you've all been waiting for, is to see what this thing looks uh, like on the outside um, and to sort of give some additional explanation for why I call it the rotten apple. go you can see somebody painted this thing black with black texture paint painted the apple symbol green painted this apple symbol green and the eject button green <laughs> went around to the other side same same thing gotta love this this crackle texture paint 
I'm sure there's there's a bunch of Mac fans out there that are are dying. The top is smooth. I think for all the acrylic pieces they painted the inside. I have a feeling, um, and so you get this nice flat texture, a flat black on the top and the front, um, and they painted the inside. So this is glossy black. Um, the original plastic is still showing. It's just been darkened with black on the back. And so there we go. There is my rotten apple. Um, so I'm excited to have this system all back together. Um, I'm going to get this back into the house and I am going to have some some gaming time. It's been a few months since I've had this thing in a functional state. So, um, yeah, I want to appreciate, I want to thank Garth Beagle for stopping by today. Um, Garth's a big Mac fan. Um, and, uh, I'm sure this, this computer makes him cringe a little bit. Um, but I think he, I think he understands that I, uh, I do my best to restore Macs when they're in the right condition to do so um but yeah thank thank you all for watching um get subscribed because i'm sure there's going to be some new projects coming along very shortly um i don't know if i'm going to have much time to stream next week um so you're going to get a little break from me probably um but yeah thank you all and i'll see you soon